Welcome to the Inner Huddle, a youth football development podcast for parents, coaches, and managers of young aspiring footballers. Your hosts from Pezza Street Soccer are Pez and Jeff. Welcome along to the Inner Huddle. Today we are in our brand new surroundings of the Pezza's podcast room, which is uh, the bottom floor of my house. But we've made room, we think, just so that we can do our podcast from here when we need to. And I'm joined, as always, by Geoffrey Bonner, football Hello. and futsal legend and futsal coach of the year, or football coach of the year from Wiltshire. My dog, Baggio, which if you listen to podcasts, you can't see, but trust me, he's here. Um, and we are joined, our first special guest in our new studio is football freestyler and magician John Farnworth. How are you doing, mate? I'm very, really good. I'm excited Excellent. to be here. Honoured to be here. So not only are you the first guest in our new room, yeah. um, you're the first one that's been filmed, although we did try a little bit a couple of times before, but we think we've nailed it with the sound now. So, um, yeah, you are very honoured. But we're, yeah. we're very honoured to have you here. Oh, so. Thank you. You've just done your live performance, yes. your um, football magic live um, at uh, Wellington Academy mm-hmm. in uh, Tidworth. How was it? It was good, yeah. Really good audience. Um, done a show in that particular theatre before, so that always helps. So kind of knowing, you know, what to expect. But yeah, um, I always love performing. It's like the, the, the thing that I, I enjoy most about my work. So it's always a pleasure to share what I do. We thoroughly enjoyed it, didn't we? Yeah, I thought it was absolutely seamless as well. I Thank you. It was flawless. I thought it was fantastic last year. Um, yeah. And this one surpassed that, so yeah, well okay. done, mate. That's good, that's what good you want hear. is to get better each time, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely, like, that's what you want. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Right, John, I know you're a regular listener of our podcast. You love a podcast, <laughs> don't I you? I do, I do. Um, I'm going to be now. But for those of you who have been living on the moon and haven't tuned into our uh, podcast, it's called The Inner Huddle. We have questions sent in from various different sources, either via social media or people contact us directly and some of them are mine and Jess too okay yeah. and on this show it looks like we have 18 and we just literally plow through them 1 to 18 some of them you kind of answer yeah. with other questions but gives us a good base doesn't it to, mm. to to get the info on whatever topic we're on about and the last one was a women's and girls football special which has gone down really well so if you haven't listened to that make sure you tune into that one that's excellent right should we just go straight from the top question number one Question number one. Nice and easy. What is freestyle, John? <laughs> Man, uh, how would you put that into words? I guess freestyle, obviously, has evolved, but it pretty much is doing, dare I say, or trying to do the impossible with a ball. I mean, freestyle, there are no rules, so it's yourself and a ball, and then off you go. And for me, it started off juggling a football as a teenager, learning various techniques through, uh, well, futsal, really. That was my background, a game called Football de Salon. Which is obviously how we met Perry yes, and, we did, yeah. and that sort of sport. Very early, weren't you? About 16 then, weren't you? Yeah. I, yeah. I coached him once. Yeah, Tom Irrefin. I know. It was only yeah. one session. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'll take credit for I'm it. I'm still getting there, but uh, that was to this guy's <laughs> level. Was session on long, long pass? It was. <laughs> of all the things it could be, it was, it was long distance passing, yeah. Cut on my neck, and then I've never been the same ever since. <laughs> but yeah, freestyle, it really is like freestyle with a football, obviously the game of football is a lot different because there's a lot more rules. There are rules in the sport of freestyle and, and competitions that have, that are emerging and, and becoming very, very popular, um, especially with social media. But it is um, a growing thing and it is, it's such a positive thing, I think, because there's no real, um, like I say again, there's no real rules. It's like, off you go, what can you create? And for me, like, it's, it's such a, an intrinsic love for it. I just love, yeah, yeah. like, training still. Like, I still go out and not bothered about what, where it takes me. I just enjoy creating. You're so. in love with the process. It's the process. Of freestyle, uh, freestyle and getting better, aren't you? Yeah. Like, Which you can translate, we get onto a bit of this later, but you mm. translate that into loads of other aspects of life in general. Yeah, I think process. It's always a battle because, of course, you know, you get when you get to a certain level, there's always that gratification. But I think as long as you're working every day, and that's what freestyle taught me about discipline, and that's, like you say, I've, I've been able to use in various other areas. And that's what I make my shows about as well. For me, it is about that and what I've learned. And if I hadn't have got into freestyle at that age, I don't know what I'd be doing because that is, you know, my main love. And it all stems from the ball, so... We always say, because we have a freestyle element at our soccer school, yeah. literally 
you're just free to practice your own style and the kids seem to understand that and yeah off they go we start every one of our sessions well not, yeah pretty yeah. much every one of our sessions with a freestyle warm-up yeah which we can you know have a look at how they're doing and what they're learning yeah. where they're at and they're literally free to practice whatever style they like yeah. so the floor yeah. moves keepy ups it can be sort of traditional freestyle moves yes. whatever yeah. they like um, but it can be in a game, can't it? Because like, there's, you know, step over is technically a freestyle because it's yeah. like a way of using the ball or yourself to create something different. Uh, a back heel, or it could just be thinking of something different. Like, remember watching Ronaldinho? He'd like, do a yeah. move, he'd like look the other way, and like he was like the ultimate freestyle he footballer was, yeah. in that respect. So, um, yeah. I just wrote down there about competitions and governing bodies, and how does that all mm. work with? freestyle yeah so when i first started competing there wasn't a governing body there actually is now called okay. the freestyle federation um so they actually well they, they rank every athlete that competes i i don't actually compete now um i, I guess i've moved on there i say to other things but i still follow the sport and i'm still involved in the sport and i judge um but yeah it's a big thing i mean you know for a lot of the guys competing that is their life and it's important to put a governing body around that to give them well to give the sport a proper home i guess yeah. um i mean it's a sport but it's still freestyle so there is like it's definitely it's not a black and white thing you know yeah. like in football you got a one nil win of course you're always going to get opinions but the governing body is there to serve and grow it and you know i always think if freestyle was an olympic sport that'd be amazing like wow. i would watch it that'd um, be some achievement so wouldn't I'd, it? Love to, that I'd love to like at least grow the popularity of my work so people then see other guys doing it and then it grows it to a bigger thing but you never know like it's definitely there if it if it, if it was right at the time maybe it could be a, an olympic sport who knows and uh, Jeff, you've done a bit of freestyling yourself, haven't you? And it was actually John's marathon yeah. with keeping up the football the entire way um, that inspired you to do a little fundraising challenge, isn't it, for your futsal team? Tell us a bit about that. I did nearly two miles of keeping up the ball. It's not quite the same as, not quite, but as the London Marathon. You did it on a futsal ball, didn't you? I did yeah. do a futsal ball. From, I think that's, that's well impressive. Um, our badge, our club badge, tells a story of how this... City of Salisbury came from Old Sarum, from an old hill fort, um, and someone fired an arrow. So I went from the hill fort, Old Sarum, to um, Five Rivers, our home of our futsal club in Salisbury. And it's challenging, yeah. keeping up a ball over any distance, really. Yeah. Because the ground varies in gradient. and it does. It's There's lots going on around you. There's bikes and there's cars, cars flying by. Yeah. 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 It makes it difficult yeah. just to... Just keep your balance, really. Well, I was very proud of you, mate. Anyway, Thanks, mate. So, means a lot. Yeah, <laughs> right, question yeah. number two. Um, do you want to read this one, Jeffrey? Yeah, I've got the long one. <laughs> we do a freestyle topic as part of our player development syllabus. Um, what are your thoughts on those that might say it's just fancy flicks and tricks and isn't helpful as it can't be used in matches? Um, I do see that point because, you know, the reality is it's it's you're probably not going to be able to catch the ball in the back of your neck or balance it on your foot. Um, but there are tricks you can use, like ground moves, streak soccer moves, futsal moves, that are, I mean, we see the best players in the world do them, like Messi and Ronaldo, so effortlessly. I mean, if you look at Neymar, for example, he actually references in his book that he watches freestyle on YouTube and social media to gather inspiration. So I think that definitely has a, a relation to the game you know the, the bigger game as it were but I think aside from that the discipline that we spoke about just before I think to get good at anything especially freestyle you need to train and I think if you realise that you actually develop a belief in yourself to actually mm. learn anything outside of football so I think there's a bigger picture to it and there, there is from what I've learned so far so I think it's good habits I think to get good at freestyle you need good habits to get good yeah. at football you need good habits and you know we spoke about that, like, the repetition and the, you know there's the 10,000 hours and stuff like that but you know it's true you got to put the work in so uh, and the best freestylers in the world are some of the most hard-working people I've ever come across so I think definitely definitely a pathway into the game for confidence and you know all that balance coordination but on the other side of it such a, a good discipline to learn and, and for, for the, the bigger bigger life skill I guess we so, always uh, sell it to the kids as it's, it's mindset training, isn't it? Yeah. If you can see maybe in around the world and think, oh my goodness, I'll never be able to do that. But yeah. you can then go and train <laughs> and train and train. That's the mindset that you're trying to help Get these kids develop. Bit. Yeah, it's like, it is, it's mindset. Um, <laughs> I think you've got a new friend there. Oh, no, yeah. It it down there, <laughs> 
There's a really good book. <laughs> Sorry, just <listen. laughs> my dog's really... attacking John. <laughs> There's a really good book called Mindset, actually, uh, by Carol Dweck, I believe. It's here somewhere um, behind us. Oh, uh, such a good book. And she outlines like the difference between a, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. And like, I think we all battle with it. I do sometimes. I think, well, that's impossible. But then you think, well, if I had a growth mindset, then anything's possible, really. So I think once you can adopt that, like I was saying about the belief, then you really can go on to a you know learn quite a lot and you can actually as a coach you can instantly tell in your group of players who's got a growth mindset mm. and who's got a fixed mindset by doing freestyle mm. yeah because you give them a task that you know that they won't be able to achieve yeah in that time and then you see who's yeah. sticking at it who's asking questions and then who's gone off and kicking the ball against the wall yeah you can instantly learn and then you can highlight which kids that you need to work on to help them yeah. develop a growth mindset because it's so Good important with, with, with anything. And of course, there's the obvious doing keepy ups on your first touch and all Absolutely. that kind of stuff yeah, as well. Yeah. Technically, there are things balance, coordination, yeah. like, like you touched on, agility, flexibility, yeah. Yeah. Um, helping prevent injuries, yeah. all of those. I mean, if you only did freestyle, you're only going to get good at freestyle. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. You, know, you have to take it in the context. Yes. There's so much you can get out. You shouldn't dismiss it. No, de definitely not. Like All the best players in the world are comfortable on the ball. It's yeah. like going back to the analogy of you wouldn't join a orchestra without learning the instrument. Yeah. And freestyle very much is a, a method to get better with a ball. And then, like you say, once you introduce the tactics, the awareness... Because I'm sure that can be learned, but there's other exercises for that, and then you can yeah. create the you know the perfect footballer. Um, but no, definitely it's a it part. certainly can't do any harm, can it? That's no, of thing. course it can't. And no. the, the confidence, you, you yeah. Know, when you see a kid who first catches on his neck or first does around yeah. the world, you're not going to do that in a match. But the confidence you can take into oh. your matches and life in general. Absolutely. So I think it is a very important thing, which is why we do. Was it six weeks every year? We do specifically on freestyle there's something different that we offer that sort of no one else around does because it's sort of unheard of yeah yeah kids love it as well don't they like, yeah they get that buzz it's like oh if i can do that then maybe i could do that and that and that and then all of a sudden they, they that's the growth mindset growth again growth isn't it yeah mindset. right excellent stuff question number three what things are you currently up to so this is specifically yeah. for you this one John. <laughs> Um, man, so I... You're a very I, busy man, I know that. I, I Yeah, I guess I am. I mean, I, I, I obviously got one more show now to do of my, my tour, which I, I always look forward to. And it's been quite tiring this year because I've been doing eight shows and they've all been all around the country. So that has been my main focus. Um, so last show tomorrow, then I'm off for Christmas. I've got a few things that I'm going to be doing, like just work-wise, like a few performances at... Liverpool, Man United, um, but that's like my general day-to-day -day stuff. So that has been my focus. Um, but yeah, January I'm sort of looking to plan. I'm doing a, a new challenge in in March. So okay, uh, can you with, give us any more than that? Or yeah, no, no, I can, I can. So um, I'm going to be like I've done the marathon, we did Everest, and a few other endurance challenges. I'm going to be doing the Sahara, the whole Sahara. Uh -huh. <laughs> Biggest, hottest days. As you do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else could I do? I was like, yeah, let's go. That's me saying you should do the three peaks. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to go and do the Sahara. I think that would be hard, the three peaks. But yeah, I've been planning for it for a while and obviously it's been kept under wraps. But um, I'm going to be doing it for a charity, a uh, children's charity this time that's obviously quite Excellent. close to. We'll we'll support you on that, family. obviously. And Thank you. Out there. It's no bother. Thank you. So yeah, so that it's, it's literally going from the live shows and, and the magic and the freestyle combined to like just fully training yeah. what going to the beach <laughs> seemed to me i mean um, i've obviously known you i don't know how many years now uh, but you need that variety in in your life and in your freestyle to yeah keep you motivated. we get on to a bit I, about motivation later but yeah um, like I, for me i don't know i'm quite it sounds arrogant saying it but i'm quite polymath like i have a lot of interest genuinely like i genuinely love magic i genuinely love freestyle and i genuinely love like fitness and well-being so I guess what I do allows me to like mix all these things together. Yeah. So yeah, I think it does. If if I always did like endurance challenges, I'd be bored. Yeah, yeah. If all I did was close up magic or stage magic, I'd be bored. So I think it, it gives me um 
it gives me variety and it allows me to be myself more and just do what I want to do. And you know. So what's your bread and butter? Is it the shows, like half-time shows at United and yeah, Liverpool and things like that? Is that what you, is. your core it business, is. if you like? Yeah, yeah. And, and also putting on workshops. Um, I'm very fortunate that I work for BBC now as well. Mm-hmm. So I host Match of the Day Kickabout um, and I worked on Can You Kick It? Uh, last year and the past few years I've been working on shows like Jamie Johnson so that's definitely something that's taken um, more of my time especially the last year with the hosting and presenting Um, but yeah from a freestyle perspective I I love doing the shows but I love doing I really like teaching and workshops like like going back to inspiring kids and even the shows like you want families and children to come and go away thinking actually if I adopted those messages I could go on and and aim at something good so a friend of mine came to watch the show tonight yeah caught up with him afterwards and said oh did did your boy enjoy it I loved it and he said I didn't realise it would be such a, a another message within that there so it okay. definitely worked yeah sort of the, the working hard to achieve your dreams it, and all of that it's important isn't it because you know i don't want to be just be like look at look at this trick i can do or look at that it's like this is what i can do yeah i want you to enjoy it but i also want you to realize that when i was a kid i i just i was like them you know just thinking well i want to get to that level so it's making it possible for and you definitely and, did that as well you saw Free stuff. I think it was Mr. Wu, wasn't yeah. it, back in the day? You came my, to my first comp- Yeah, I did come to your first competition. You never yes. forget that. It yes. was amazing. Like, I, was yeah. at, I was at this man's first other competition. <laughs> I was there. It was, it was in Wimbledon or somewhere like that, wasn't yeah. it? It was in London. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you, yeah, you were inspired by Mr. Wu, if yeah. I remember. So, yeah, it was Mr. Wu's competition, wasn't he it? He ran it. And you thought, I want to do that. And I you did it, did it better. Well, yeah, I mean, he came to a training course, do you remember, in Leeds. Yeah. And I was like, what the heck? Like, how is he doing that? And that really got me hooked on the sport and I was like I'm just going to train and, and learn what he's doing and yeah sort of that's how I got into it. Is he it. still about? Is he still doing his stuff? Yeah he's gone back to Korea this guy he, I mean he's a legend he's, he's, such, crazy he's a character yeah, like him, yeah. what a guy you could do a podcast on Mr. Yes. Wu get him on <laughs> why not? I've got a number for him should we see if it works? Mr. Wu <laughs> come on you know you want to he's probably a pop star or something he must find out what Mr. Wu's up to we'll, we'll drop him a line after that's brilliant yeah. Right, question number four. You got this one? Yep. How many world records have you got? I currently hold eight at the moment. Um, just the eight. How many have you got, Just Jeff? the eight. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Only eight less. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not too far behind um, in the grand scheme of things, is it? Yeah. So I'd say, like, out of that, the hardest ones, we, we did a record for the Everest challenge we did, which was for the highest altitude covered within an hour. So that was done actually towards the end of the trek, going up to 6,000 metres. So that was tough. Um, doing the the ball control was hard and we showed that in the show tonight yeah, the yeah. 137 feet ball comes down and that was what I was think harder that one or the volley probably the volley just because the volley was higher so 150 feet that was the, the highest volley in the world that was so much fun because we did it with Bullard like that yeah. guy he was I think we, we were laughing <laughs> yeah. like we were laughing but like, I get really competitive in those environments. Did you know him before he, that? Had you met him before? No, never no. met him. Um, so I think he was like trying to wind me up, you know, like <laughs> so I'd miss it. Because what happened was we did it from a drone initially at about 130 feet. So I got that, he didn't. So I was like, yes, I'm going to get this record. And then later on in the afternoon, they did it from the helicopter. And then he got it to 150 and I couldn't get it. And then when my turn came to do it because you get three attempts I managed to get it but wow yeah, I've seen the video he was trying to wind well. me up it was yeah. just that it was such good fun guy's a legend I really really enjoyed uh, spending the day with him but yeah it's quite cool to like hold one with him um, do a lot of these records get broken then you have to break them again do you push the a lot of there's a core of you that push yeah. each other on well, I mean, Dan the, Magnus has got a few oh, he? Dan's got loads he's probably got more than me um, I mean Dan's a great I mean I, I honestly think Dan's are some of the hardest because he, he's set like a lot of the endurance ones like, he, he kept the ball in the air for 26 hours I mean that's just insane just pff, different level yeah, um, different. yeah but yeah they are I mean I've probably attempted not hundreds but maybe 50 60 records and you know have a few now but yeah you do i mean you want records to be broken i guess it's like athletics you know you want to be pushed and otherwise there'd be no point it's like healthy competition 
So we think you broke one tonight. Yeah, whether it was official or not, we're not quite sure. Ninety-seven round the world. Yeah, might was... have been a dodgy clicker. Yeah, I, I did I film it, so we'll have, to, we'll have to have a little look <laughs> later. Like 50. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, it was quite a funny moment. I'm sure. Yeah, I was really surprised. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you noticed. Yeah, and the number tell. is ninety-seven. <laughs> like we beat it. Wow, we just beat the world record. You smashed it tonight. Yeah. So well done. Yeah. Thank um, you. Right, question number five, and we kind of touched on this anyway. But how and why did you get involved? I presume in freestyle. Yeah, obviously I came from a football background, influenced by my family, especially my granddad, like he got me into football. And then I, to be honest, I actually stopped playing football when I was 14. I just started started not enjoying it. I, I sort of fell out of it and, you know, I played, played a lot with my friends and, um, you know, technically street football, just like on the streets, doing whatever. And then I got back into it through Brazilian soccer schools and they they were running sessions at the time near Manchester. I'd seen a TV show called Michael Owen Soccer Skills with Simon who yep. started the school and I, what these kids were doing. I've got doing, book behind me somewhere actually. That's, that's, that's a better book, one. you know, that the, Is it? play the Brazilian way. Oh no, it's uh, somewhere I saw it the other day. Yeah. I'll look it out. Because my copy of it, I, I treasure it because I, I think they're quite hard I to I treasure get mine too. It's back there somewhere. It's back there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I will care. now. <laughs> now it's rare. I didn't realise that. Um, so yeah, like seeing Simon and his, his methods on, on coaching the kids about ball mastery, I was like, I really want to train this way. It just seemed more child centred and more player centred as opposed to like the coaches that I were playing under were just like not just the winning but there was winning at all cost and I was like I just want to play football I just mm. enjoy playing with the ball so coming back into it through BSS and, and training futsal and those methods that that's what got me into freestyle it introduced me to people like Mr Wu and other freestylers that really sparked my interest and then when I was about 18 19 I was like well actually if I dedicating myself to this and, and actually saw myself as an athlete as a almost like a footballer would at that age then it would take me seriously back and, and it did so that's it in a nutshell really and I've never looked back since that that moment of sort of committing to uh, to the freestyle okay straight into question number six then Jeff how did the magic stuff come about so I've only been doing magic for three four years I used to watch it on TV and I used to love it I watched like Dynamo David Blaine I watch a lot of like Darren Bound stuff and just be like mind blown by it. And then I started reading a book about Howard Thurston. It's called the the world's greatest magician. And it, it I was like, I don't know about this guy. And I read about him. And it was it was just interesting to to sort of study what how he lived. And I was like, this is amazing. I, I want to learn magic. I want to like get into it. So. I, um, yeah, just bought a few books and then I started learning and sort of understanding and it just went from there really. Like I learned my first trick and I performed it for my dad and my dad's like, because he's seen me do freestyle and nothing impresses him. I'll be like, I do a <laughs> trick, be like, yeah, whatever. And I did a, did a, a trick for him, like a magic trick where I tied my laces um, and he around was, the world tie laces. No, that, that was no? before that. It was okay. just like I, f I found a method that was because there's other methods that are known, I think, for that. But um, this one, I was like, this is really interesting. So I thought I'll just see what happens, dude, for my dad. And he was like chasing me around the house. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, this is really there. interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, it sounds bad because it's like I did it for the you know applause of that, but really like studying this guy Howard first and from hundreds of years ago, you know, and then getting into it and learning and, and all these characters just really fascinated me and then actually learning how to do it and how to present it and then it just kind of evolved and was I there guess... a moment though where you thought i'm gonna put my love of magic and my love of football together somehow was um, there a definite moment or so did you always think i'm gonna put them together from the start or um no, no, because I was started studying it, and then I got an opportunity to do some stuff with Neymar many like what well, many years ago. It was like three years ago now, and um, yeah, I was talking to the guy that I was working with, and I just mentioned the magic. He was like, "That'd be amazing! Like, why don't you do some magic for Neymar?" So I was like, "Okay," and that, <laughs> that's where it started. And then after that, like CBBC started doing stuff 
with the magic. We had a little thing called football magic and I'd like put a few concepts together and we'd, we'd go off and, and perform it. And I was so inexperienced. I was literally learning as I went on. Um, and now I, I've, I've refined it a lot better, but yeah, it, it just sort of happened, I guess, because it was so different and, and people really responded to it so well in a positive way. It just kind of took a life of its own. And now I love it. Like it's um, it's definitely a big part of what I do, and I want to really push on and, and create my own magic one day. Is it um, is it a similar pressure performing magic than it is to freestyle? It's different, but it's nerve wracking because I'm nerve wracking just watching. <laughs> not, with your, not with your freestyle, with your magic. Yeah, that's because I've known you for so many years. Yeah, and I know yeah. it's new. Yeah, and that anything happens, it's live. Yeah, that's the thing, and that, that is why I love doing the live shows because you know you see stuff on TV and it. Yeah, you watch it, but there's also something in the back of your mind where you yeah. think, well, that could have been fate in some way. It's not fate because that's how they do it, but I think there's something in, in yeah. the brain that thinks that way. So in a live environment, it is a bit more nerve-wracking. But I sort of, I don't know, I always have a character on stage where I make mistakes, and I quite like that. I like I like to kind of put myself down to hopefully fill myself up. <laughs> so the tricks are good, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm still learning, I'm still learning it's my It's a good and... um, humorous element to it as well. It's a bit yeah. more this time than last time, I felt. Yeah, like... It's just got funnier, maybe, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I study a lot of people, and I, I do try and learn and, and adapt it in my own way. I, you know, I'm not really one for copying, per se, but I, I think you, you have to draw from other things, like you were saying about, you know, other areas and, and pulling in. Um, there's, like, certain comedians that I might watch, or... Even just like Darren Brown, like his material is so different from what I do. It's like reading people's minds, but just the way he presents it, it's the way yeah. he talks. Like, you just, just learn so much from that. Question number seven: What advice would you have for anyone looking to be a freestyler? I think, obviously, you know, it's cliche, but practice hard work. They have to come first, but you need to have fun and maybe create your own style. I think. A lot of the tricks have been done now, so maybe think of a different way of doing it, or maybe it's difficult mix to it. wow anyone anymore. Yeah, isn't it's, it? It's, it is. it's all been seen, even though definitely you might know how hard something is. Yeah, yeah. Or you've seen it before. You've seen tricks that might be easier, but look yeah. harder. Yeah. Um, Going back to Mr. Wu, he did the motor roller advert, didn't he? Which was the first time anyone yeah. had ever seen the the soul keeper. Everyone ups. thought it was fake, didn't they? Yeah. Didn't it even time. I did for a moment, and I remember at the time. I was like helping coach a football club and I remember like showing them this video on my phone. I was like, watch this. And they were like, it's fake, it's fake. And that even Jeff can do it now. So <laughs> <can't> <laughs> do it. <laughs> but that's it, isn't it? I yeah, mean, we like, yeah. went from thinking it was fake and, it's, you know, yeah. big debate. It's not real. It's all yeah. camera tricks and stuff. And yeah. then seeing people like you do it, no offence, but then seeing people like Jeff do it, it becomes more and more accessible. It's like the people norm. see it be done, yes. Yeah, like like is it two minute mile, was it? Rugby yeah, was it four, two, minute mile, four minute mile. Four minute mile, that yeah. would be good, two minutes. <laughs> two minute <laughs> mile, yeah. Two that would be good. I was doing the two minute mile now as well, so that's good. I could do it with a boy, it's like easy. No, it is, but also there's opportunity that comes with that. You know, you can't get one without the other. So for all the normality, I think, approaching freestyle i did a challenge for myself uh, when i got back from everest because i've been doing so much endurance i challenged myself to create a different trick every day for 100 days oh, yeah. couldn't it's repeat a trick. Instagram, yeah. yeah and and that was to push me in other ways that i would have you know because we are quite we can be lazy can't we if you're used to doing the same routine doing the same show you're yeah. going to do it unless you push so i think publicly by saying guys i'm going to do a trick a day for 100 days and i just about managed to do it and there was no repeats and no tricks that i'd, I'd, I'd nicked basically they were just like my own little sparks so yeah i think it, it's definitely good to uh, to have those things and try and push outside so yeah just be yourself you know and have confidence i think if you want to be a performer obviously just just perform as much as you can i used to street perform like every week in manchester because i am i still am quite naturally introvert so it was quite hard for me to just stand up in front of people and perform so i think doing that on a regular basis gets away a lot of the nervousness and gets away a lot of the anxieties that are just normal so 
You know, Do you ever wonder what you would be like now? This is one of the questions, but yeah. how your life would have been if you hadn't have found freestyle? Would I don't you have been introverted? Do you think you'd have yeah. gone a completely different route? Totally different, yeah. Because, I don't know, I'd have probably done something. I, I love studying and reading, so I'd have probably done something like... There's a few books yeah, back so. here you can borrow. No, yeah, I might. I yeah. might have got a few of these. You can't so. see, but there's a few more over there as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's I'd, a few more to bring in as well. So. Yeah, I don't know what Another I'd book. Do. But, would yeah. you recommend that, because you've added in backflips and would you recommend acrobatics and stuff? Is yeah. That, is it, do you think freestyle will go that way a little bit too? Definitely, and it has. I mean, um, certainly for me, a lot of my friends do parkour and free running, which is yeah. how I learned to flip. And um, yeah, I've had a bad knee recently, so I've not been able to do as much as I really want to and push that side of it. But uh, yeah, the, I think that's a really good angle to take on it. Um, you know, mixing something like you say, a lot of stuff's been seen. So why can't you? Why can't you add a flip in? Why can't you do something? Yeah. You know, magic's probably another example of that. You know, mixing the two. Um, so yeah, I think I people keep breaking boundaries and putting different things together yeah, and yeah. coming up with their own style. And that's I watch. I have a lot of influences outside of freestyle. One of them is is now a friend of mine, William Spencer, who mix. I saw his videos a few years ago and. If I watch Will's videos, even though he does nothing to do with freestyle or football, I get inspired and it makes me create. So he mixes parkour and skateboarding. Right. He's amazing. So his mind is like it almost comes off the screen in, in, to my mind. And there's other people like him that I will watch. Um, people like Buster Keaton, you know, like mm. the way he created film in, in a different way. And I love watching stuff like that because you just think of the obvious. Well, I could do that with a ball or. Yeah, I think just well, a good be... book for you. I've just finished actually called Creativity. Oh, um, it's all about good. Pixar and yeah. how that all started and the journey it went on, oh, and Disney and things. Though. So yeah, yeah, I think you'll like that one. What question are we on now, bud? Okay. Question um, number eight: Which freestylers do you like watching, and which ones would you recommend to young freestylers to watch? It's a great question. Oh man, so for me, like the guy who is unbelievable at the minute is from Norway called Erlen Fagerli. He's got a brother, Brynja, those two lads, oh, different level, like just the tricks they do, the way they do them. Erlen's never been beaten this year, um, which doesn't sound much, but now there's a lot of competitions. He's entered every competition and he's won every competition. So if you really want to get to the top in freestyle, I would look at those two guys. The Fagerli brothers on Instagram, some of their clips are amazing. They don't always post, they're clever, they don't always post their best tricks on Instagram until they've done it in a competition. Okay. So if you go on YouTube and watch like the Red Bull Street style videos, like highly recommend watching that stuff because they always come up with new tricks and you just think, I thought about that, but I didn't actually think it was possible. <laughs> How Pushing are you just boundaries gonna... again. Yeah, so I always watch those guys. Um, but I also like watching street soccer as well. Um, like we were talking about D10 before, and so I always watch like Dan and um, Sian's obviously a freestyler from France and also street soccer, so he's always quite creative. Um, there's a really good guy from France as well called Gautier, who he makes a bit of dance and, and sort of almost theatre with his freestyle so depending on what you want but I think look at as many different people and, and you know like I said before pull from it but certainly start with those but watch any any competitions if you go on YouTube as well there's a, a really good channel called Flair TV which okay. um, the guy that runs it really good lad he just uploads like all the freestyle events from all over the world there's like videos going up there every day so um, sometimes I'll just go on there and watch just to keep my eye out for just people and, and what they're doing because it, it helps me progress, you know, I still feel like I'm progressing, so, yeah. And we've had Dan Magnus, haven't we, at the soccer school before, friend yeah. of yours? Yeah, yeah. And Tom Foley, we yeah. talked about Tom, earlier, man. didn't we? Yeah. I mean, Tom, Tom's a legend, like, one of the very few people in, in the UK to be able to do a triple around the world, a pally around the world, like, three times around. Um, like Dan, we spoke about before, like the, the endurance that guy's got, but as a performer, just like exactly what you'd want really for his... Both completely different. Oh yeah. In yeah. characters and in style. Yeah. And, and you know... Tom's more one, introverted, isn't he? Yeah. And more like a pure freestyler. Yeah, he's one for the purest, isn't he? The technical yeah. aspects Very. of getting things perfect. Yeah. And Dan's more of a showman and he's yeah. great with the kids and yeah. <clears throat> I love them both and we have them down quite regularly, yeah. don't we? Yeah. 
Um, Great yeah. characters, both so of them. Big shout out to those two. Yes. Great guys. Yeah, check them out. Um, question number nine. What was it like working on the Match of the Day Can You Kick It series? Um, obviously, we've watched a bit and we ran a competition at Pezzo Street Soccer for um, freestylers to, well, freestylers, any child, we did different age brackets, didn't we, to send yeah. in um, clips. Mm-hmm. And it could be anything from ground moves to, you know, technical freestyle to just sticking one in top bins it yeah. could have been anything and yeah. um, a girl called Taylor McDonald was, was our winner which was yeah. chosen by Dan Magnus and uh, my friend Andy Reid who's also done a podcast with us yeah. um, and uh, and Taylor was on the uh, Can You Kick It series with you wasn't she yeah. fortunately she had to withdraw oh, with injury well. but she was doing really well wasn't she yeah. saw her tonight at your show didn't yeah. we which was great so nice to see her um, yeah Taylor's brilliant because she's obviously massive into a football Saints isn't yeah, she yeah she's a Saints yeah and a, a, you know she's massively into the freestyle which is also great I'm sure they help each other and like, give her sort of something um, to you know to help her game but yeah working on that show was so much fun it was the first of its kind it was like a new concept for CBBC so working with Sam and Mark was great yeah. I, I met Sam and Mark many years ago I remember watching them on Popeye was it Popeye or Popeye <laughs> that's where they came from and uh, so to work with them and we were literally like living together for the whole summer throughout the show so it was great working with them and great and seeing some of the talent you know we, we were all the way up in scotland all the way down south to the south of england and taylor did so well to get to where she got to and unfortunately the injury had to uh well put a, a stop to a journey um is there going to be more series so, of it do you think yeah well it's been recommissioned i think i think we're allowed to say that i mean they were announcing it on, just said on it, the mate. <laughs> sacked yeah uh, whether i'll be involved with it i don't know i guess there's no guarantees but yeah it's been recommissioned and i believe they're going to be advertising for players so a big shout out to any technical yeah. it's not just freestyle tricks it's technical players that can dribble that are fast they can shoot, they can control. Yeah, there's like, all sorts of different elements to it, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, I think it's every element from a technical point of view stuck into a game show out for football. I think that's the best way of explaining it. It was such a, such a pleasure to work on that this year. Yeah. Is there any age limits or can uh, young Geoffrey here enter? 14. 14! So, get away with that, have a shave, Jeff. You never know. A couple of years too late. Are those... you? Are you in? Oh, well, you know, I'm a bit like Taylor. I've got this injury. I don't know. I'm going to withdraw <laughs> before again. it starts. <laughs> oh, great, yeah. No, great. Well, we'll look out for that. And uh, well done yeah. to Taylor for, for getting as far as you did. Mm-hmm. We really uh, enjoyed watching her on that. Question number 10. Question number 10. Did you play normal football? I did, yeah. Um, like I say, up until 14, and then I, I kind of sidetracked, which took me down a slightly different route that led me into freestyle. But I did go back into football when I was 18 and 19 I played for Garforth Town you probably remember yeah, these pairs I when I, remember, yeah. so I moved over to Leeds to further my studies and play for Garforth which was actually my football highlight because I got to play with Lee Sharp oh, wow. which was very surreal as a Man United fan and um, Socrates as well yeah. yeah. so that one year I mean I was I was I played a couple of times for the first team, and but I was mostly playing for the reserves. But yeah, that was such an amazing experience. So that was probably the height of my football, like proper football career. But I kind of knew that at eighteen, nineteen, I, I, I was, I was already, you know, focused on freestyle. But I did want to play the whole season because I had a lot of friends and still do in the Leeds area. We had such a good, such a good team, young lads that were extremely fit and you know some Do you think you could make of... a living from freestyle then when you made this decision that I'm going to um, go freestyle was it just a journey very, you were going on or did you think oh, yeah, make my living from this I, very naively I did I was like yeah I can just do that just do tricks you know because I would met Mr Wu and I was like well yeah. if he can do it I can do it yeah. but it was Simon that really inspired me because Simon who set up the school as obviously you know Perry like he he inspired me in, in that way where he was like, well, you know, dedicate your life to it. And I, I thought, well, yeah, that's, I can do that when I'm that age. I was still at my parents and, you know, I was able it's to so sort important of, to have someone like oh, that yeah. comes in at the right time. Massively. And says, do you know what? If you want to do it, you can. Yeah, yeah. You will if you want to. He almost had the belief in me, but in the same 
side, uh, on the other side, sorry, he almost didn't like, he was almost challenging me. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if he did that on purpose. Probably, just, <laughs> Simon, yeah. He was like, well, that's not a proper job type thing, which made me really grip my, grip my uh, feet into the ground and sort of knuckle down. And actually, I remember meeting him and he sort of said these things. He was like, but if you do that, then you never know where it can take you. So I remember going home that night after being at his house and I, I wrote down a proper training schedule like I was at school. So I'd be like, I'll, I'll work on that trick, that trick, that trick, that trick. And I was training like eight hours a day and sort of knowing that if I did that, well, probably not many other people in the world would do that. And I guess they didn't because it enabled me to win a world championship, which kind of really helped me in my career. The Inner Huddle from Peza Street Soccer.